Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back. Rock the Stage here once again, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Back in for another great conversation, and we're going to deal with life tonight. Your life is so much fun. But the one thing about life, there's always life, dex, and taxes, right? But in between the life and death and taxes, we got to live. We got to have a little bit of fun. Now, if you've been around the show at all, you hear me joke about the fact I'm probably the biggest kid in the world. I don't think I'm ever really going to grow up. And that's part of the fun that I get to bring with these interviews and conversations. But some people have a, a way of taking that to another level. Some people have a way of living life to the fullest and helping other people figure it out. We're going to talk about that tonight. And hopefully you'll be inspired because some of us start to slow down. We, we, we start to think, I've done it all. I've experienced it all. Is there anything more as you get older and older? Well, we're going to say yes, I believe, tonight. Ariel Ford is a love and relationship expert in leading personality and personal growth and contemporary spirituality movement. Past 25 years, she's been living, teaching, and promoting consciousness through AI for all forms of media. Her mission to help people find love, keep love, and most importantly, be loved. But she's also the Wabasabi Queenager. And we're going to talk about that tonight. It might tie in the love, it might tie in the relationships, but what in the world is a Queenager? Here she is, Ariel Ford. Great to see you. Good to see you, Rich. Thanks for having me on. When I first heard Wabi Sabi. Okay, Queen, I got to stop you right there. It's Wabi Sabi. Wabi Sabi. Yeah, there you go. Well, when I first heard that, my mind spun around and said, okay, first of all, what's a queen ager? And what is Wabi Sabi? So start at the beginning. What exactly is this all about? Okay, I will. So wabi-sabi is an ancient Japanese aesthetic that honors all things old, worn, imperfect, and impermanent, and it seeks to find beauty and perfection in imperfection. So, so imagine this water bottle was a priceless Ming vase, and it had a long, crooked crack down the center of it. A okay. Japanese museum would put this broken vase on a pedestal and then they would shine a spotlight on the crack. So wabi-sabi is mostly an aesthetic, but what I did when I learned about it is I decided I want to be a wabi-sabi artisan, you know, because I'm so imperfect. And I know everybody else is imperfect, but we live in this brainwashed world where we're always seeking perfection. You know, advertising wants us to be perfect. HGTV wants our homes to be perfect. Parenting experts want us to be the perfect parents. And perfection is not possible, but imperfection is. So let's celebrate our imperfections. Okay, so that's what Wabi Sabi is. Now, a queenager is a woman at midlife or beyond who lives as freely as when she was a teenager. So now at 71, I consider myself a queenager because I have the same motivations I had as a teenager. Yes. I value freedom. I'm adventurous. I'm rebellious. And more than anything in the world, I want to have fun, especially with my friends. So I put it all together and declared myself a wabi sabi queenager. Now, you have a TED Talk out on this subject. I watched the TED Talk, and you break this down really well. But I also love, as we get into it, it's also how we see life. And you have a great illustration with your rose-colored glasses. Yes, yes. And I actually yeah. have my rose-colored glasses right here. Let me put That whole idea you. of seeing life that way is powerful. But people don't do it, do they? Well, here's the science behind it. There was a study done at the University of Buffalo years ago and they discovered that couples who consciously choose to wear rose-colored glasses live longer, happier, healthier, and recover from illness faster. And of course, they have better relationships. Why? Because when you're wearing your rose-colored glasses, 
you're looking for what's right instead of looking for what's wrong. So Wabi Sabi Queenagers wear rose-colored glasses, and you can buy them for 12 bucks on Amazon. <laughs> get a pair for you, a pair for your partner, and start using them. So when you get into this judgy, judgmental, annoyed state, you can shift into the Wabi Sabi perspective and learn to love and appreciate and find beauty in your own imperfections and those of your partner. Now, I've heard that rose-colored glasses statement used different ways, and usually people bring it up also of, hey, Rich, you're looking through rose-colored glasses. It's not all roses. you got to look realistically. Do you hear that a lot when you present this? Do people push back on the idea of rose-colored glasses? No. Even though it's a very Pollyanna thing in some people's minds, yeah. it makes sense. You, we all know we're imperfect, right? So why not look for the best in everything? I mean, it's easy to be negative and resigned and critical and judgmental. I mean, that's the easy way out. Wearing the rose-colored glasses, you know, rem remind you, you need to go into your heart and be generous and complimentary to people. So I, I just tell them, listen, it's your choice. You want to be a miserable old fart, you go and do that. But if not, put on the rose-colored glasses and get happy. Now, you, you already touched on the idea of being comfortable with your imperfection. Some people have a real struggle with that because, as you said, people want to be perfect. Or the expectation is to try to be perfect. Don't, don't reveal your flaws. Cover them all up. So, <laughs> See, I, I live exactly the opposite. I like to out myself instantly. So if you and I were going to go out to lunch or go to dinner, the yeah. first thing I would tell you is that I'm a very enthusiastic eater and I'm gonna get my food on me and I'm gonna get my food on you and I'm gonna eat off your plate. That's the wabi-sabi way to eating. And, and that way I out myself as opposed to, you know, you leave lunch going, God, that girl's such a slob. I'm just gonna <laughs> forewarn you and you either deal with it or you don't. It, it's just much more liberating, freeing, isn't it? That had that perspective of, yeah. Let me be me, you be you, and let's just enjoy it. Listen, we all have our issues, okay? Everybody's got many things, not just some things. We all got a bunch of stuff, you know? So why don't we get vulnerable and human with each other and going, yeah, this, this is this is how I am. You know, like I am I was in a car yesterday. Somebody was driving me to an airport. And, and I warned the driver. I said, listen, I am very nervous on the freeway. I've had bad experiences on the freeway. So if I start twitching, just know it's not you, it's me. And he, he opened up, he goes, my wife's the same way. He goes, sometimes she wears her sleep mask and when she's in the passenger seat because she gets twitchy too. You know, and then instantly we had this common bond of, you know, twitchy pass passengers. So I think, I think, you know, being open and honest and vulnerable and upfront and stop trying to be perfect because you're not going to be perfect. It's not going to happen. Well, and you've written and talked on love, romance, relationships. How hard is this concept that you're describing to bring into that relationship discussion? Because we are trying to find the perfect mate. They fit us perfectly. They love me all the time. Yeah, that's I'm never going to happen. You know, I wrote a book called Wabi Sabi Love, which was 100% on this topic because, uh, you know, I found love and we got married and we were all in the dreamy, drug-induced brain state until we weren't. And then suddenly it was like, oh my God, who is this guy who leaves wet towels everywhere and never <laughs> closes the refrigerator door and drops water when I'm walking around barefoot in the kitchen and all this other stuff? And then one day I hit a breaking point. I went into the bathroom and I realized every time I looked at the sink, I hated him. Why did I hate him? Because he's a, uh, a scrunch from the middle toothpaste user. And I would, I would call him and it's like, listen, Brian, let me show you the proper way to get toothpaste out of the tube. And I'd hold it up and I'd say, see, you just fold here at the bottom. And then you slowly raise it up and the toothpaste comes out. And then at the end, you've used it all up. And he'd roll his eyes and walk out and nothing would ever change. This went on for months. And finally, I was, I thought, well, what's the Wabi Sabi solution? And I thought, well, I could get two tubes of toothpaste and he can mangle his and I'll have mine. But I realized that wouldn't work. 
And it wouldn't work because I would see his mangled too. And it would bother me. <laughs> and I know this is stupid stuff, but yeah. it was a, it was an issue. So finally I, I took the tube of toothpaste and I put it in the palm of my hand. I said, okay, toothpaste, talk to me. What's good about you? And it spoke back and it said, thank God he brushes his teeth. There you go. And from that day on, every time I saw the mangled tube, and I still do, I smile. Oh, Brian brushed his teeth again. We're growing old together. He's still going to have teeth. So that's a wabi sabi love approach. So it's the little things that kill relationships that really bother us. And we have to, I'll give you another example. I, I yeah. was teaching a course on this one day in, where was I? Idaho. I was in Idaho. And this woman stood up and she said to me, she had her hands on her hips and she said, well, Arielle, I have a problem even you can't solve. It's like, okay, what is it? She said, well, my name's Stephanie and I've been married to Garth for 16 years and he's a good man, but I just can't take it anymore. I'm a total neat freak. I'm a perfectionist. I'm an everything in its place mm -hmm. kind of gal. And he's a total messy, chaotic slob. And I just... I just can't deal with it. She said, the only reason we're still together is that he works out of state two weeks of every month. So when he's gone, the house is the way I want it. But as soon as he gets home, it's like a tornado came through. And she said, I, I just don't know what to do. So I thought about it for a minute. I said, you know, Stephanie, do you have a dog? She said, yes. And I said, does your dog shed? And she said, yes. And I said, what do you do when the dog sheds? She said, well, I vacuum up after it. And I said, do you love your dog? And she said, well, of course. And then she like got this eyes wide open, started smiling. She went, oh my God, Garth sheds. <laughs> and in that moment she saw that's just who he is. There was nothing she could do. So a year later, I'm writing my book, Turn Your Mate Into Your Soulmate. And I start thinking about Stephanie and I'm wondering, was it just a workshop aha moment or did they get divorced? So I call the promoter of the event and I said, I know this is a crazy question. There were 300 people there. However, I have to talk to Stephanie. There was a woman named Stephanie in my workshop and she's married to somebody named Garth and I have to talk to her. And the woman on the other end said, no problem. She's my best friend. Here's her phone number. So I call Stephanie. It's like, hi, Stephanie, remember me? How are you? I said, I'm just calling to see how are things with you and Garth? And she said, oh, they've never been better. Things are so good that he quit his out-of-state job to start an at-home business so we can be together 24-7. And you don't have to ask, yes, he's still a slob. So that's the power of this yeah. stuff. Well, right? He didn't change. She didn't sit him down and said, if you don't stop this, I'm leaving you because she realized it was her problem. She was the one who couldn't tolerate who he was being. And once she understood, I love my dog, my dog sheds. Do I like it? No, mm -hmm. but it's my issue. So that's what we need to do to have happy relationships is go from annoyed to enjoyed by having a shift in perception. Now you also talk about happiness and aging. There's a gracefulness in this and there's, there's fun in growing old together or whatever your situation is, but you should be a happy and aging. Instead, we often fight that, don't we? Well, and we fight it for all the wrong reasons. What my least favorite word in the English language is anti-aging. I mean, how ugly is that? Anti-aging is death. You know, if we're not aging, we're dying and there's nothing you can do about it. And, you know, so we've made up all these stories about how bad it is, but the research proves otherwise. So there was lots of different studies on done on this. And what they discovered is that there's a happiness U curve mm. and that for most people, most people, the unhappiest year of their life is 46. And if it's not 46, it's somewhere in their 40s. Now, why is this? Because most people at that point have teenagers, mm -hmm. aging parents, yep. stressful jobs, <laughs> and a marriage that didn't turn out exactly the way they hoped. Yep. So they hit rock bottom in their 40s. Now, the research also proves 
is that once you pass 50 and until the end of your life, most people get happier and happier and more content. Now, why is this? Because as we age, we get smarter and we get more emotional equanimity. And we know that nothing lasts forever, you know, and that that good times follow bad times. So the good news is your 40s may suck, but from 50 on, you're going to have a great time. So you need to get through that bubble in time. You need to get through those four or five years, get to the other side. And then it's like, kismet, we're back together again. Things are better. Yes. I no wonder I didn't make it too far in my 50s. (laughs) Now, there also is this thing with the nip and tuck, the hair, the makeup, everything else. And I know you touched on that too with get comfortable in your own skin. You don't have to go through all that, do you? Well, I don't have a problem with anybody doing what it is they want to do. I decided for myself that I'm just going to let my hair go gray and I'm not doing Botox and I'm going to let all that go. Believe me, I have plenty of friends who do all of it. The problem because when what you've done enters the room before you do, right? When you're so, so stretched and your looks are, you know, yes. so full and it's just not attractive. It screams, I'm in denial. You know, I'm, I'm 55 or 75 or 85 and I don't want to admit it. And I have nothing wrong with wanting to look good, you know, but every once in a while you should really check the mirror and make sure you really do look good. Well, there's been many celebrities that I've seen. Chuck, for one, we'll just use Chuck's first name. They don't look the same. Kenny Rogers went through the same thing. He doesn't look like Kenny Rogers. And yeah, I don't it's sad. It's really it's, sad. Yes, it is. Look what happened to Meg Ryan. She was the cutest thing ever. Yes. And then she had plastic surgery and she didn't work for 20 years. Yes. You know, because she didn't look like Meg anymore. It also happened to Jennifer, whatever her name was, that was in... Um, that fun dance movie. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, she had a nose job. Yes. And after she had the nose job, she didn't work for 20 years, you know, because we're trying to look a certain particular way as opposed to, you know, this this is what I've got to work with. Yeah. And the truth is beauty's from the inside out anyway. I mean, it's yeah. nice if you're perfectly symmetrical. It's nice, but most of us are not ever. So, you know, why don't we have beautiful souls and beautiful hearts and and smile and laugh and hug people? So has some of this changed over time? Do you do do you think we're coming out of a period where all the things you're talking about of you need to be prim, you need to fight your age, you need to do you think we're coming through a period where more people are more comfortable living as they are? I I think it's getting worse. Really? I mean Every ad you look at is, you know, get rid of wrinkles, dye your hair, you know, it's everything, you you know, go on a diet. Now you don't have to actually die. You can inject yourself once a week with something, you know, so the we have been brainwashed by society that we don't look good. We don't smell good. And we, and we need to fix it as opposed to, Listen, we incarnated in this life into a human body to have a human experience, you know, and the most meaningful part of life is love and relationships. But yeah. that's not where we're focused. We're spending money on Brazilian butt lifts. Like, why does having a bigger butt make anybody happy? I don't get that at all. <laughs> so what got you really focused on this where was, was there an event was there yes, you read yes. that transition well, for you personally I, so long long ago i used to do pr for art galleries up and down rodeo drive and i got all the art trade magazines mm. and i remember coming back from lunch one day this might have been 1988 and my car copy of art news was on my desk and back in those days it was a big tabloid and on the cover it was a big black and white picture of a Ming vase with the crooked crack down the middle of it. And it said, Wabi Sabi. I thought, hmm, that's, that sounds tasty. What is that? You know, <laughs> it wasn't wasabi. And I read the whole article that explained this concept of finding beauty and perfection and imperfection. And as I'm reading it, I'm looking down at my lap where there's this giant spaghetti sauce stain from the lunch I'd just come through. And I thought, 
I need to be wabi sabi because I am such a slob. What if I could love these parts of myself that are so imperfect? Because at that point I was a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I wanted things to be perfect and I, I knew it was never going to happen. So could I find a fun way to live with it? And that was the start. That was like sort of phase one. And phase two started 10 years later when I got married and I discovered not only was I not a perfect partner, I wasn't married to a perfect partner. And yet I had just taken vows to spend the rest of my life here. Not that he wasn't perfect for me, yeah. you know, but all of a sudden I discovered I had no partnership skills. So it was really me I had to fix so I could be a better partner. And of course, when you model good behavior, people tend to follow along. So I don't think we're getting better yet, but I hope by spreading the word of encouraging women to be queenagers that I can at least, you know, be a role model for women of a certain age that, you know, life gets better. Well, and, and on your TED talk, you mentioned being a queenager and you made the statement along the lines of you're comfortable living as your age, but living as a teenager. There are still parts about that. Love to be crazy, don't we? Yeah, no. In fact, I, I just got back from Lake Tahoe last night and, you know, we were hiking through waterfalls, you know, and, and luckily I had some much younger people helping me climb through the rocks because I'm not that stable anymore. So I think it's really important to have much younger friends. Yeah. Like three of my closest friends are at least 20 years younger than me, you know, um, because they'll keep you engaged and keep you young. And Next week, I'm going to go to the Harley Davidson dealer to test drive a trike bike. Now, I'm not going to buy one, but I and, I, and I'm scared of regular motorcycles, but a motorcycle with three wheels sounds like fun. So I'm going to go do that. And I learned to play basketball a few weeks ago, and, and I've always wanted to shoot a gun. I don't want to own a gun. I'm not pro-gun, yeah. but I watch a lot of movies with a lot of guns, and I thought, what does it actually feel like? Yeah. Shoot a gun. I just want to have the experience. So for me, being a queenager is trying new things. A few weeks before that, I went hang gliding, tandem hang gliding. I was yeah. strapped in. Yeah. So much fun. It's so quiet. It's just you and the birds. And they actually, the guy has his own falcon, a real bird, a falcon. He, he was hang gliding with us. You know, so it's being adventurous and doing new things and, and, um, just, you know, getting your, getting an adrenaline rush. I actually think adrenaline's good for you. Well, right. Well, I just got a Facebook post from my college roommate. We're still best friends all the years later. And he sent me a post of doing the tandem parachute jump. Yeah. And that's braver than I am. Laughing. And I'm like, okay, it's proven now. You are crazier than I am, but he's having fun. Well, I have to say jumping out of a plane isn't anything I'm going to do, but doing the hang gliding and the parasailing, yeah. you know, because we have cliffs here. And so you're actually sailing over the ocean and the beach. Mm -hmm. So even if something goes wrong, you'll land in the water and I'm a good swimmer. So, so I'm doing that. So as, as we're telling these stories and sharing there's smiles, there's laugh. And I know there's going to be people watching thinking that seems kind of childish. It seems kind of foolish. How can you help people? rethink that philosophy what can we do the and what's wrong people? with being a highly responsible child that has her own car and credit cards and a career behind them what what about that isn't working for you but 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 there the, but there there are those that think this is just silliness because again i can remember looking at my grandparents i can remember looking at my aunt, aunt, aunts and uncles at my late 50s now looking at them through different glasses and saying they are so stoic they are so boring they're so that we're talking about a different life that i think more of us are living that way today though i, I think they are embracing yeah, it yeah no it's um you know my my grandparents basically the same thing happened every minute of every day yes. you know but that was their generation mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm sure at when my grandmothers were in their 70s they would not be paragliding you know? no. So you have to make your own choices and your own decisions. You know, for me, fun is my highest value. Mm. I, mean, I wake up in the morning thinking, okay, what about today is going to be fun? What could I do today 
that's going to add a little fun and something a little different. And um, it's just a choice. It's just a choice I make. I, I want to, um, I'm healthy now and I hope to stay really healthy. Not that I'm on, not on 10 million medications, but <laughs> thank God for modern medicine. You know, right. thank God for Medicare. All these people, oh, they're on Medicare. Medicare is like the greatest thing ever. Oh my God, it's so wonderful. So I just keep looking for the benefits of aging, you know, and I love that I'm at a stage in my life. I'm still working, but I'm working my way. I don't yeah. have deadlines. I don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have any employees. Thank God. They have these virtual assistants now. I've never met my virtual assistant. 18 years in, I will, I never even talked to her on the phone. I just email her. Hey, could you please do this for me? And bam, it's done. At the end of the month, they send me a tiny little bill. It's like, it's the best. So how much of that? Let's talk about the technology advancements that have gone on. I mean, through pandemic, a lot of us now do work from home. We, we do have our home offices and we've separated yeah. so much. How much of that helping to embrace what you're talking about? Because now you get to work at home, sleep at home, eat at home, play at home. We could be in our well, own environment. That, I nearly died in the middle of the pandemic, not because I ever got sick, because I was so freaked out that I couldn't be with my friends. And ah. then I could, here in San Diego, they wouldn't even let us walk the beach at one point when we were in lockdown. Couldn't go to the beach, all this fresh air. And they have yellow caution tape ups. You know, I was so stupid. Uh, not that we weren't careful. We got vaccinated. We wore yeah. our masks. We social distanced. But... Um, now that we're out, like I just came from a four day party for my friend's 50th birthday. And it was great. Every meal, I was meeting new people, having different conversations. We were out in nature. We swam in that freezing cold Lake Tahoe. It was awesome. You know, so I just keep wanting, you know, that Cindy Lauper song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Oh, yeah. Hey, sign me up. What is the next step for you? You you you've been an author and you work with some amazing authors. You are an accomplished public speaker, and you've got this energy and this vitality for life. What's what's next for you? What's on the horizon? You know, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I'm sort of in this liminal state of like waiting to see what's next. I mean, the thing I'm most excited about right now is creating a, a Facebook group. For queen agers it's not up yet i'm just sort of designing it in my head or i can have a daily conversation because i want to ask other queen agers what are you doing for fun what's on your bucket list what oh. adventures are you doing you know what are you reading um I, i'm a voracious reader I, I love books i live for books my husband's totally into live music we go to concerts last week i went with one of my girlfriends to see ellen degeneres she's out on the road doing stand-up again yeah. you know uh, we've got tickets to see jerry seinfeld in a couple of months you know um so you know having fun and also, um, given that the stock market's doing so well, I'm having fun watching that. I don't, I don't know much about it. I just like to look at the bottom line. Yeah, I made this amount of money today. It's like, ooh, that's so exciting. You know, so. <laughs> is is there a different feeling vibe for men versus women in this teenager conversation? I don't know because I'm so new to the conversation. I only did the TED talk less than two months ago. Oh, and wow. I only discovered the word a few months before that. The word okay. was coined by a woman named Eleanor Mills in the UK. And she's mostly advocating for like getting rid of ageism in the workplace. Yeah. You know, and I'm mostly advocating fun and not working too much or working <laughs> smarter. So it's, it's a new conversation that I'm just, exploring for my own personal use and then i want to share what works for me and so what works for me won't be for everybody mm -hmm. you know i have i have friends that are you know older than me that are now raising grandchildren yes you know uh, and you know this was not their plan for their mm -hmm. retirement no. but circumstances happened and kids needed a home or they were going to go to foster care so I, I have a couple of friends that are dealing with that. Um, but yeah, I think here's my, here's what I tell everybody who's younger than me. If you want to travel, do it right now. Don't wait. Cause when you get to be my age, there's knees and hips to consider. You yeah. can't be hanging out in Cinque Terre, Italy 
at a certain age. You can't be, you know, going to the Amalfi Coast or to Santorini at a certain <laughs> age and expect to be, you know, going 90 degree vertical up the hill. Uh, so do the traveling now. And fortunately, we've done a lot of traveling, yeah. but now that's like a new consideration wherever we're going somewhere. Uh, you know, well, how many stairs are there? <laughs> <laughs> well, hiking the pyramids in Mexico and that I did when I was age 10 will be different when I hike them later on in my age of life. Age 10, I was like climbing those stairs like oh, nothing. Sure. Those are big steps. And they're steep and they're narrow and there's no rails. There's no rails on those there's pyramids. There's no rails. Doing it now would be a whole different way yeah, of doing it. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure yeah. of that. No, I, don't, I never really understand why cruise ships were filled with people with gray hair. And now I understand you only unpack once, right? If you need a wheelchair, everything is wide enough. Like yeah. they're very accommodating and accessible in new ways. Uh, but we already cruised a lot when we were earlier so we probably won't do that anymore but yeah i think if you want to have adventures do the really you know hardcore physical ones early yeah. on yes you mentioned something about the grandparents and raising children i i'm really curious because there's a boomerang generation that's happening where the kids have been raised but financially not making it they all move home together now you have your child you have a grandchild but there is something about watching grandparents get on the floor and play with their grandkids and the Legos. And they have more fun than they would ever normally have if they didn't have that relationship. Does that play into this too? That they're yeah, I've got a, I've, being I've played met a, free? I met this woman at the gym named Kristen. Oh, I can't think of her last name right now. But she has a huge following on Instagram on being a, an active fit grandparent. So yes. she'll, she shows herself sitting on the floor with an infant child in her arms. And how do you stand up when you're holding a 20 pound baby, you know? And so she does these exercises that prepare you to be a fit grandparent. Well, again, you've got amazing stuff going on. We're going to bring up your website here. Now, when they scan the QR code, please scan the QR code. What are they going to find your website? What are they going to learn about you? Okay, so there's a couple things on there. So if you're single and you want to find love, I have a free online dating guide that you can download. Or if you want to find out what kind of queenager you are, there's a super fun quiz. And both of these things will get you onto my newsletter list. Every Tuesday, I send out a newsletter that had, have tips on finding love, keeping love, being love having more fun uh and whatever else i feel like talking about but i'm sending out newsletter tomorrow that's number 716 i've been doing Whoa. this quite a while Whoa. yeah so there's lots of information and at the top of the website there's a little tab that says free stuff it has a drop down menu lots of free stuff i don't really sell anything on my website but it also lists all my books i've written 12 books including a novel called The Love Thief. It's a romantic spiritual thriller. Wow. And I've got a producer who's developing it as a streaming series later on. So there's lots of stuff there. Go check out the website, hit the QR code. You want to learn more and just dive deeper into it. I would like to connect the dots between love. You have spent a lot of your career talking about love, romance, relationship in this queen ager space that you're now delving deeper into. It's never too late to fall in love, right? Never too late, but it's different because the state of being in love, as most people understand it, is actually nature's greatest drug high. It's your brain on drugs. It's your brain on adrenaline, oxytocin, uh, serotonin. Um, what's that uh, bonding hormone? I can't think of the name of it right now. Anyway, it's great drugs. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with what real love is all about. Right. Real, because it happens with a stranger. You're yeah. having this great experience with a stranger, and then it wears off. Usually between six months and three years, it wears off and pretty much never comes back. But what comes out of it is actually better. A real adult mm -hmm. mature love where you're deeply bonded and devoted to another person's happiness and they're devoted to yours. However, um, you really want to choose wisely. So you could fall in love with somebody, 
but spend a year or two getting to know them to make sure you share the same values and you have the same picture of what life is going to look like because they, they know what makes relationship work. It's been studied extensively. And most people think love is a feeling. And that's the biggest mistake of all. <laughs> love, ha love does have good feelings to it, but love essentially is a behavior. Love's a choice. It's an action. It's a way of being. And there will be days for anybody who's been connected to a partner for any length of time. There will be days when you hate your partner and it doesn't mean that you don't love them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're allowed to go to our own rooms. Yeah. Oh, no. And, and listen, when it gets nasty, take a time out. Yeah. No. And whatever you do, don't fight late at night. These people, oh, should never go to bed angry. It's much better to go to bed angry and have a conversation in the morning because when you're tired and exhausted and plugged in, nothing, you're not going to hash it out at one in the morning. It's not going to happen. So maybe go to another room, but go to sleep. And then the next morning, I'm going to, I'm going to give you one really great tip for my book, turn your mate into your soulmate. If you're really pissed off at your partner, when you wake up in the morning in a very nice tone of voice, tone of voice is critical. Say, you know what? I have a problem I'd really like your help with. Do you have 10 minutes sometime today where we could just talk? And they're going to say, oh, no, no, tell me now. Do not tell them now. Just like <laughs> 10 o'clock. So your husband might say, oh, I'm going to get home, work early. Do you want to go for a short walk at 4? Yeah, 10 o'clock's fine. So you go for the walk. And while you're walking, you say to your partner, I know how much you love me. And I know that you would never consciously choose to hurt me. But when you said this or when you did that, I felt this. Mm. And you just give it really simply and then you shut up. You do not say anything else. You let them respond because most of the time they're going to be, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Or, oh, that's not what I meant or whatever. And then you accept their apology and you forgive them and you never speak of it again ever. Okay. That's a mature way to have a happy marriage. One of my favorite things about watching elder couples is when they are playful. I see them holding hands, sitting on the park bench. They're giving those little kisses or they're walking down and someone plucks a flower out and gives it to the other one. I love seeing playful couples love each other, but do this queen major thing where they're still playful and fun or teasing each other over dinner. I love being in a restaurant when I can hear them joking with each other. It's it's wonderful to see that there is still that playful nature in all of us, no matter how old we get. And you can be intentional about it. Yes. You know, like Brian and I love to eat. So when we go out, it's like, oh, my God, you got to taste this. And I'll put something on a fork and feed it to him. They're like, no, 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 you got to taste this and I'll feed him. Or he's he's a wine snob. And I like wine, but it gives me a headache. So, no, no, no. You have to have just a sip. Smell it. Have a little sip. You know, and, and it's intentional. You know, like we want to be connected because we see all the families where there's six people at the next table from three on up and they're all on screens and they're yes. not interacting. And you're just no. like, what's the matter with you? What could be so important or what game is your kid playing? You know, it's like, it's terrible. Ariel, what's the biggest tip to give everyone today as we wind down, rock the stage about being a queen ager? I would say that you want to put a little post-it note on your mirror and every day ask yourself, what queen ager thing can I do today? I love it. Ariel Ford, thanks for being with us here today on Rock the Stage Show. Thanks, Rich. Rock the Stage every Sunday night. Amazing conversations, discussions with people from all around the world. And we've got some more in-depth, very personal conversations like this coming up on Rock the Stage. You're going to want to be here. Remember, we're streaming on PPN, the Public Place Network, every Sunday night. And also on our YouTube channel. And on YouTube, you can join our live chat conversation during the show tonight. Hopefully, you've been typing in, adding comments, giving emojis, sharing some love along the way. But we're every week, every Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time, back again for another edition of Rock the Stage. Thanks again to Ariel Ford for being our guest here tonight. We'll see you next week right here, 7 p.m. Eastern time, for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.